What I'm going to do is begin to build the file that will contain the bulk of our application framework information. And there is a file within the course files called application.cfc. Note the capitalized A that will make it available no matter what type of server this particular website moves into. So I'm going to double click that to open it and right now it's simply an empty file named application.cfc. In order to make it a CFC file that Cold Fusion can understand, the first piece of information you need to put into this file is a CF component tag. And that component tag has an opening and a closing tag available to it. Now, Cold Fusion Builder, when I went to do the closing tag, had it indented. As soon as I finished the closing tag, it went level with the left-hand side. So don't let that throw you. As you build that tag, it'll pop right into position where it's supposed to go. Now that is how Cold Fusion understands that this is a component file. You can also see there's an asterisk in front of the actual file name within the tab area, and that means that this file has been changed and not saved. The first pieces of information that I need directly under the opening CF component tag is some variables that I'm going to set. And within Cold Fusion Builder, you can see when I'm in the CFML tab within this area, if I hover over some of these tags, you'll be able to see what tag Cold Fusion Builder or CF Builder creates. So this monitor is the CF output tag, and this little, I'm not quite sure what it is, is the CF set tag. So I'm going to choose that, and it just makes typing a little bit quicker. Now I'm going to use a new, and let me get this typed out, this dot data source will be power. And notice I'm getting a code hint for power right there by CF Builder. Now that this variable scope represents this component. So the idea behind this is this is a special scope to use within CFC files. The reason I'm using power as a data source is if I look at my RDS, which I set up earlier, that is the name of the data source I defined within Cold Fusion. So what I'm doing is setting a global data source variable. Anytime this component is used, this data source will be defined. And since the application.cfc runs before every page request within this root folder or any interior folders, unless I have a separate application.cfc defined there, it's going to reference the data source across my entire application. So I'll just keep going and referencing and defining these as we go. So the other piece I'm going to do is set the name of my application. This helps Cold Fusion understand the scope of the application. So this dot name, it's called Power Workshop. So I just named my application. The next one is I'm going to turn on Session Management. Now these variables are not case sensitive from a Cold Fusion standpoint. So this session management could have been uppercase, but I'll try and be consistent with my cases in terms of setting these up. So the next one will be another CF set. So that turned on the ability to use session variables within Cold Fusion. The next one is going to be the session timeout. And I'm going to set my session timeout using the create time span function. And I think for functions, it's easier to see what it is quickly if we use the headless camel casing. So I'll capitalize the T and the S in that word. Now I'm going to set session management to 10 minutes. So this is days, hours, minutes, and seconds. So that preset my session timeout. I do have sessions turned on within the Cold Fusion Administrator already. 
That is done by default when you install Cold Fusion. The next one I'm going to set up using CF Set is I'm going to turn off Client Management. So instead of using Client Variables, and I must spell that correctly or Cold Fusion will not understand it. So I will say no or I could say false. Since I'm using true up above, I'll use false here. The next CF set is going to have to do with logins. I'm going to set this.login storage. And our logins are going to be set at the session level. So client management turns off client variables within ColdFusion. We're going to use sessions instead. So our login storage will be put into a session level variable. The next thing I'm going to do, and I'll just type this one out, is going to be set domain cookies. Now notice the code hints pop up, and I can use my up and down arrows to choose, and then hit enter once it pops up. And our domain cookies are going to be true. What domain cookies do is in a multi-server environment, it allows the same domain name to share cookies across those multiple servers. So that is domain cookies. The next one, we're almost done here, is going to be script protect. And if I just wrote script protect, it would be a local variable. It would not go into the this scope. So it's important to make sure that I add the this scope right here. And script protect is going to be equal to true. I like how CF Builder adds the second double quote. And the last piece is going to be application timeout. So this dot application timeout. Application timeout is going to use the create time span function as well. And the create time span function I'm going to use for this one is one hour. So what I'm doing is setting my application to timeout within one hour. The default timeout within the Cold Fusion Administrator for application level variables is two days. So I can always go shorter within this file, but I could not set this to three days within this file and have it work. So there is an association between the timeouts for sessions and applications. You can always go shorter here, but you can't go longer than what you have listed in the ColdFusion Administrator. So there are the application level variables all set within this application.cfc file. If I go out to the Cold Fusion Administrator, I'll right click the server here and go out to the Administrator. And when I do that, I'll go into the Memory Variables area. And you can see the default or maximum is two days for each, but the default is two days for application variables and 20 minutes for sessions. So I can't set what's in that file any longer than these, but I can certainly change it to shorter. So that's the memory variables area within the administrator. I'll go ahead and save my file. You can see that it has the asterisk right here. And if I try and preview this, I'll just put it into the Firefox tab right here. If I go to preview this file, it's always going to give me an error. The application.cfc file, as you can see, it's listed here, is not available within the browser, and that's for security reasons. So the way to preview and make sure there's no errors within this file is to run another file. So I'll go ahead and open up the header, click Firefox, and as long as you can see the header listed, that means this file ran correctly because this application.cfc is running before the header.cfm is requested. So that is application level variables and setting them within our application.cfc file. This file 
you build upon in order to create your entire application framework. So we have just begun by initializing application level variables for the application.cfc file. 